What's up, everybody? It's Mods Cage Radio uh, Project. It says Freeway 41 is shut down. So uh, he can't make it. So I'm supposed to be on the air with the project, and he's not here. I just tried to call Postal P to see if he was going to be available. And, of course, he did not answer his phone. So we'll try to call him again live right now. And then I will just ham and egg it until I figure out what the fuck it is that we are going to do. So there you have that. So now I am throwing out a call to Postal P. Message and I'll get back to you. All right, so the mailbox is full and cannot accept and the mailbox is full. This time. <clears throat> Goodbye. All right, so there you have that. So anyway, here's the deal. Uh, Friday night, I had uh, five for wrestling. James and I transfer or uh, traveled out there. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me wash it down with a frosty cold beverage. I'll close my chat box here. <coughs> anyway, Friday night. I don't even like Bud Light, but they sponsor the Raiders, if you guys are wondering. Anyway, traveled out to um, Bakersfield, California, Friday night. James and I to watch the uh, Fight for Wrestling show. Fantastic show. Again, want to shout out to uh, Scott Bowler as I wait for Postal P to give me a call back here. But um, anyway... um, Fantastic show. Kenny Ento um, was the highlight video that I put up. I thought that was going to be the highlight of the weekend. Little did I know on Saturday night, the uh, up-and-comer show would uh, would top that with the 11-second spinning back fist, which was pretty epic. So uh, both shows, fantastic. Another show that went down. There's a, quite a few shows that went down over the weekend, but one of them was in Northern California. That's Gladiator Challenge. And... Uh, the only results I know are Jamie Hara won his belt, and that's his sixth belt. So congratulations to Jamie Hara. Fantastic victory, as always, my man. And then um, his teammate, James Franchier, the teacher. Or no, it's the educator, I think it is. Anyway, he won his belt, and I put an epic photo of him mowing the lawn. Well, what I learned today says sources close to Cage Radio have uh, indicated that uh, the belts that these guys won, I guess, I guess Gladiator Challenge is low on belts, so they have to give the belts back so they can give them out at another show. So I guess that means Saboba. So the guys at Saboba, you're getting the belts borrowed. Like I couldn't figure out how that went down, but apparently that's how that goes down. So <clears throat> let's try to give uh, Postal P another call. He probably won't be available. And then uh, I will just go through my Rolodex of fighters here, and we will see. We will play who the fuck will answer Mott's phone call. I'm not calling Phil the Pain Collins no matter what. It's just not going to happen. So Postal P, supposed to be our guest tonight, knows that he's on, and he apparently is not in cell phone range or something like that, but he fought in some crazy ass show cage versus cons. I wanted to hear all about this show. They had cops, they had Marines. Uh, um, they had various guys going against former convicts and whatnot. And I guess the convicts were guys that have turned their life together and used MMA to do that. I'm assuming that's what the uh, story is, but I was trying to get that from postal P, but, um, actually, why don't we give, a call out to uh, Bat Boy. This is what I listen to every single fucking time I call this guy, okay? Is this not the worst rap song ever? Listen to this. Cage Radio. All right, we're live on the air. Postal P did not call in. You didn't drive in. 
I now post a piece of fucking call him. He just texts me, but I got you on the air right now. So, um, dude, what's up with the fucking 41? Oh, uh, they're doing some construction on the 41 and it was closed. I couldn't make it out today. Okay. So <clears throat> we hate Caltrans. They shut the deal down. Um, yeah, they're killing me. Okay. Uh, other websites that are not cage radio. I don't care. You can, uh, you can say whoever they are. Um, Release some information about some fights. Talk to me about some fights and whatnot. What what what, uh, what has been released so far? The arm collector I see is is your main event, or is that not the main event? Like, how, what's the main? Uh, that's not, that's the, not main the main event. Is, is McCall right? Yeah, Ian McCall. That's right. And and uh, Uncle Creepy and the Mongoose. Yes. Yes. That's Fantastic. David. Okay. Yeah, David Loazzo will be back to defend his middleweight title against uh, Jiva Santana. Um, and I believe you, had, you you should have had all the other fights. Is there any fight, other fights that you were missing? Oh no, no, no! I'm just saying that they those had been released. Uh, I saw Drew Bittner and uh, Gomez was released on there as well. Uh, did we talk about? I guess we talked a little bit about that last week. Yeah, we talked about that one. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, August fifth, it's going to be outside now. Fighters were having a heck of a time with the uh, mat and the hotness up in Northern California, but you guys have a canvas and it's covered. I don't think there's going to be any issues. Have there ever been any issues out there at the Tachi as far as the heat of the uh, mat? Not to my knowledge. Okay, they've all you know they've always had fights outside. Right. Not to my knowledge, have they ever had any heat related incidents? Yeah, and you guys got the uh, screen up and whatnot now, so if there yeah. was, it's it's much less of a. An, yeah, and then you you know you cover the mat, you cover the mat up until showtime. So. Oh, okay. So, um, when do tickets go on sale for this event, and what do they start at? Uh, I believe they go on sale. Um, it might be the first part of next week or the end of next week. I don't have a, a firm date right now, and they start at thirty dollars. Okay. But this time they're this time they're doing something a little different. They're gonna the actual ticket price will be thirty dollars. But what they're doing is they're doing this thing called an early bird special, where you can um, if you purchase your tickets um, prior to a week before the event, you will get five dollars off whatever 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 ticket range you 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 decide to get, whether it be oh, thirty okay. all the way up to. So basically, you know, so it would cost you twenty five bucks instead of thirty if you got them before. Yes, you know, and if you got a $60 nice. ticket, it would cost you 55 All right, so the, the early bird. That promotion, yeah, and then that promotion is coupled with uh, they're going to do that $10, the $10 uh, Tachi Cash giveaway again as well. So uh, you can also get $10 in Tachi Cash where you could spend within the casino. So, oh, okay. Um, yeah, so you can get up to, you know, 15 bucks back on your on your ticket. Okay, cool. So basically, um, the the ten bucks, like I can go gamble with that. Is that what what that's yeah, all about? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. Okay, that's fantastic. All right. Well, that sounds like a good time. All right. So um, I got everybody calling that didn't answer, but um, all right, Project. <laughs> any anybody uh, you want to shout out or anything you want to say? I wanted to talk to Goodman. I might uh, have to fire off a text message to him. I guess he was a. Uh, a referee for all 16 fights this weekend. Were you aware of that? Yeah. Yeah. I heard you did a real good job. <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah, some of my sources there, say, there in his jeans and Nikes. yeah, some of my sources say that he did a fantastic job, but he's one of the ugliest referees that they have ever seen. So I, I don't know. I cannot I mean, confirm he, that. He's on, he's on, he's on par with one of the ugliest matchmakers I've ever seen. So, wow. I, I, I could see him as one of the ugliest, uh, Referees as well. Yeah, we, some sort of a trifecta, like ugly matchmaker, referee, fighter. Yeah. Wow. And uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, before we get off, though, I just want to say, you know, we went out. I uh, went out uh, Friday, last Friday, to uh, Bakersfield show, the Fight for Wrestling show. Yep. <clears throat> uh, again, I was re- I was real impressed with the job that uh, Scott Bowler and Scott Adams do out there. Um, it's, a, it's a great event to help support wrestling. And, um, you know, I thought the fights were, were, were pretty good. You got to see, you know, some good knockouts and some good action. I was really impressed with, with some of the fighters that, that competed there. Not, uh, not so, I mean, kind of a hard luck for some of the local guys, but, uh, overall, I, I thought that was a great, a great event for MMA. Um, and then, uh, I got to see the amateurs at the up and comers show on Saturday. 
and probably got to see one of the wickedest, wickedest knockouts of the year. That's got to be a yeah. knockout of the year for sure at, at yeah. this point. Absolutely. The spinning um, back fist was just absolutely yeah. awesome. Yeah, definitely stole the show, that's for sure. Oh, man. Have you ever seen anybody knocked out for that long? Uh, I mean, you, I mean, you pretty much said Mark Matthews was probably the only guy, but I don't want to throw my tattoo artist under the bus, right. you know what I mean? Yeah, he's a great uh, tattoo artist. The fighting yeah. part is still the jury's out, but yeah, I mean Mark had brain juice coming out of his nose, so I don't know if the <laughs> other guy had brain juice coming out of his nose. <laughs> but he was out, out, dude. I was like, oh shit! And the worst part of that is the poor mom. Oh my god! Like they were saying, you know, the parents are freaking out on the other side of the cage. You think? You think mom yeah. had a uh, sit down with Junior the uh, next day? I said, Matt, look, <laughs> this ain't you, son. Yeah, you got tapped out. You got tapped out in your first fight, yeah. and you got knocked out in your second fight. Not, time. not even close to. I mean, that has to have another name because that was like beyond knocked out. Like I don't even uh, know yeah. what that. He was time traveling for sure. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> but so, uh, I was, I was really impressed with both events. I thought, you know, both events were well run, and 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 you know they were they were enjoyable, and it's good to see some promotions, you know, doing shows in the valley and stuff, and giving guys local guys opportunities um you know that's what it's all about all right that's what i'm talking about all right so what's up next or something uh june 17th is uh you got anybody uh is anybody fighting on that one or is there anybody uh that you got fighting on uh, any of these other shows coming up i believe alex perez is gonna fight on the june 24th card okay the pro card right okay yeah they haven't they haven't confirmed an opponent but they asked him they asked him to fight I heard he was calling out uh, Lance Palmer. Is there any is there any truth to that? No, that's a okay. fight that uh, you tried to make in uh, Bakersfield, <laughs> and you didn't even know who Lance Palmer was. No, so not, it, shut that one down real did, quick. But I know who the party is now, brah. <laughs> He's a but, big uh, deal. Apparently, they had a uh, a fourth piece on him today on uh, MMA Weekly. He's kind of a big yeah. deal. Yeah, definitely big time wrestler. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it's kind of fitting. It's good for Alex because he he fought fought a couple of his amateur shows for Jason and Upper Comers, you know, and and to be able to go back there and fight pro, I think is a is a good thing. I think that's a good aspect of the show that that, that they're bringing that they're not only doing amateurs but they're doing pro ams. So some of the guys that they bring up to the amateur ranks, they're going to be able to give them some professional fights too, and and, and uh, you know they're 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 going to grow a following. Um, so it's good that the, that the following that up and comers has, where they get to you know see some of the same some some guys fight and stuff. So pretty nice venue that's that they right. had going on at the uh, Sierra Sport and Racket Club out on the tennis courts. I like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I liked it too. I, I kind of told you I would have I would have changed some things. I would have moved the cage to the other side so that balcony area could have been like a VIP area. Right. Um, you know that that might have been something I kind of did a little different, and then and then the bar area would have been a little closer to the cage. But, uh, you know, they, they had to put it under the lights, too. That that might have been part of it, that they, the lights weren't on the other end of right. there. Right. And I was just waiting for that. I was waiting for that uh, for that groundskeeper to drop the light Ooh. on somebody else. That would be classic. Yeah, that was right at the beginning. There was a guy on, uh, I don't even know what the hell you call that, some sort of a high-rise deal, changing the lights. Yeah, he was, on a man, he was like on a man lift, and a, a Ricky-looking man lift, and he was, he was trying to change the lights, but he was, like, going over some some wiring or something like that. Like yeah. Pretty, little, pretty high tech situation he was going through. Yeah. So, uh, that was a huge light bulb too. That, that shit would have, <laughs> shit would have smashed somebody pretty damn good. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. So that was, uh, I, I definitely think they need to put some crowd rails up. Oh <laughs> God. The, uh, yeah. In the cage and the, the, the front well, row there. Well, were, were you there? The, were you there the last time when the same kind of deal went down in Madeira? Yeah, it looks like the crowd's getting ready to rush the cage yeah. at some point. And, well, uh, that crowd was going to beat up the promoter. Like, they wanted to beat up Weiner for no reason. <laughs> like, yeah. really? Really? You yeah. got to you gotta beat up the promoter? That's awesome. So I'd invest in some bike racks maybe to put up, to, uh, you know, keep the crowd back. <laughs> yeah, well, I was just glad that you, at least they were going to trample you before they got to me. Oh, definitely that was going to happen. I was just going to have to, like, I was going to, like, thought about climbing into that cage, but then I I looked at the canvas, and I was like, oh, my God, dude, something died on that canvas, so I'm not yeah, trying to get on that canvas at that all. That canvas was, uh, 
below average, I think, is the way they put it. According to some of my sources, I'm not throwing them under the bus. Um, some say that the uh, the canvas was black, and you say, well, it probably was, but it sat out in the sun. But under further review, it's actually been bleached to try to kill whatever was on it, and that's why it's gray in addition to the sun. That's what my sources tell me. So there you have that. All right. Did we lose you? Yeah, I guess we did lose him. All right. So the project's done. He's off like a senior prom dress. We're done with him. I got Vanquish and Postal P here. We're going to hit that fucking Postal P right now. All right. We're going out here. The mega show. <clears throat> Hey, there he fucking is dot com all right postal p finally joins us i don't know he's getting his toes did or something are you one of those <laughs> fighters that paints his toes did no okay no. i was just checking that's, that's, that's the rest of the, the pit not me <laughs> okay i was just checking because i was pretty sure like you did not partake in that part of the uh part of the deal but no, uh, my my dad um my dad still loves me so I get a spanking for that. Oh, yeah. Like the time that uh, when I graduated high school, uh, my parents sent me to Hawaii for my, quote, senior trip or whatever. So I yeah. thought it would be a good idea to get a fucking earring when I went over there. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when I came that home, pop. yeah, that uh, that seven days that I had that fucking earring, I probably only had like five days. But uh, my dad gave me two options. He said, well, one, you can take that uh, that faggoty thing out of your head, or I can. <laughs> so, so I was pretty sure that he wasn't going to remove the clasp or any of that kind of shit. No, hell no. No. So I decided, well, I think this is one of those times in my life that uh, I better listen to my parents because, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, I'm old enough to fucking yeah. know it. Yeah, so... <clears throat> yeah, I have a hole in my ear, but <laughs> no earring. So my dad saved me from that fucking horrible beating. So I'm sure that was going to fucking end well at a party somewhere, anywhere later down the summer. So props to my dad. All right. So tell me about this, this insane show that you fought in and whatnot while I just drink fucking Bud Light on air. Um, it, well, uh, you know, we, we do, I drove down to L.A. Uh, you, what, what, uh, how much detail you want? Dar, we there? got all the whole show. Let's fucking let's start at the beginning. Did you take Sharpies? Uh, no, no. I wasn't. In, you know what? I, I should have, but I didn't. Okay, I was just checking. Well, you're not qualified really to fucking handle a Sharpie. We've already been over that. No, no. I'm not a Sharpie guy. But, no. But, uh, no. Like, there were, you know... There were little kids first time at MMA shows that parents were taking them to see hip hop, and so they were like, you know, kind of like, wow, you know, and they'd never, never been around MMA. That was the whole thing with the the show is that most of the people there had never been to an MMA show. Oh, awesome! So they, they you know, they were really, they were really uh, treating us good, and and they, you know, what I mean, like, so hey, you know, everyone was popping us out in this. Not like a normal MMA show, like, uh, okay, fight guy, you know? Right. So they're like, good fight, you know? The, the energy was really high. That's you know? cool. Uh, yeah, so it was cool. To, but, you know, I left the house. I, I weighed in at 178, and I'm heading there. And then I stopped in Santa Barbara. Kind of just put some sweats on, you know? I'm thinking, oh, I'll just sweat, you know, turn my heater up. I didn't put no plastics on. I'm heading there. Then I um, pull off in Santa Barbara. And I get on the scale, and it says 182 Whoa. or something. Oh, no. Uh-oh. So I go back in my trunk, and I um, put plastics on and start driving again. And uh, I turn my heater up, and I'm sweating like a pig now. And uh, I'm getting closer and closer. And I, I keep wanting to pull off on an exit all the way to uh, Rosemead. It was about three and a half hours away. I keep one more. I'm going to get off on this exit. I'm going to get off on that, you know, and people are calling you and, you, and like, I can talk on the phone when I'm driving, 
all day long. But when I'm cutting weight and people are talking on the phone, I just get fidgy and, and I, I can't sit still. I can't hold a phone. So I'm like, I got to go. I'm going to pull off on this exit. Well, I never ended up pulling off on the exit. I just kept driving and I got all the way there and I kept the plastic on. And it's a good thing because um, I was right on the right on the money when I got to the show at like 175. Even I was a, I was actually a half pound heavier than him surprisingly, and he was tripping out. Damn, uh, dude, you you fought at a buck seventy five. Uh, we fought at a dollar seventy five. Yeah. Wow. What's the heaviest and, you've uh, ever fought at, P? Uh, that yeah, that's it. One seventy five. It is, huh? Okay, I was just yeah. curious about that. Continue. I, 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 you know, I got up to one, about 193. Wow. Like, I got heavier and shit, but, uh, yeah, so we, uh, we made weight, and he was like, when I talked to him, he was like, I couldn't believe you were probably, I didn't realize you were cutting to get there. And uh, I guess it kind of, he was tripping, like, he thought I was going to be, you know, like, right on the weight, so he knew that I had, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't come in fucking, uh, <clears throat> unprepared. I came in prepared. I came in heavy. You know, he. I put. Okay. Well, now, when you're I, saying he, now who exactly is this guy? Uh, Danny McWilliams. Okay, and what's his background? Uh, he, he uh, he's uh, I guess a striker. He's had some wins by submission, submission. Okay. But it was a it was a rematch, and I choked him the last time. Oh, okay. So he wasn't a con or anything. He was he was, this was just a, a a rematch fight. You'd actually fought this guy before. Yeah, actually, okay. you know what? Even 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 though they were convicts, they all had pro records. Really? So they're all yeah, yeah. It was cops versus con, but everybody was a pro. So it was all pro fighters just Oh I thought it, it was, I thought it was uh it was an, uh camo. That's what I would I, oh, no. I thought some of it was camo. Okay, okay, so no. they were all pros. Yeah, all pros, all pros, and it was the you know, the Roy and uh, I can't remember. I know Roy, <laughs> the commission, you know, right? You know Roy, yeah. And then the shorter Mexican guy, I forget his name. He likes to be called that. He likes to be called the shorter Mexican guy, so that's fine. <laughs> He's always, he always gives the rules meeting. He, he'd be mad at me if I didn't know his name. Sorry, uh, but you know he. Uh, not not uh, anyway. not David. The guy that talks like this? Yeah. That guy? Uh, with the salt and pepper like, hair? He's the one. He's the one. He's Do the not one be antisocial. No drinking alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> he's, the, he's the one at the rules meeting that, that goes, All right, when we do our Vaseline, we do it like this. We put the Vaseline directly over the eyebrows. We rub a little on the cheeks. A little on the cheekbone. That is it. No, no, putting it on your hands, wiping it down their legs, and saying, "Go get them, champ." We will not have that. We will suspend you. Nice. <laughs> he does that one every time, and everyone always. He still, I still laugh at that to this day, because the whole GPS and um, DJ pin thing when the whole yeah. gasoline bill. Yeah. So right after that. All the commission really had to cover that. Where all right, there's no, you know, swiping his legs with Vaseline or. Well, I've heard, uh, I've heard that you can actually soak in baby oil, and then it will ooze out of your pores later during the fight. I don't know if that that's allegedly what BJ thought that GSP did. Yeah. Uh, and the bottom and line that, is, if you're not cheating, you're not trying, bro. That's the bottom line is, and it's yeah. only cheating if you get caught. So like Barry Bonds, who's the home run record holder in major leagues next, yeah. <laughs> he might've cheated, but <laughs> next it's not, you can't prove that shit and whatever. But anyway, all right. So yeah. you, uh, <laughs> you got fucking plastics on, you're driving down the freeway. Like, this is just fucking old hat to you. Like, you've just got little, like, tricks and whatnot, and you're like, well, fuck all the sauna shit. I'll just turn the heater up in my car, throw some plus. Like, you're actually um, making it happen on the way to the fight. <clears throat> That's outstanding. Like, uh, I don't even know how many fighters do that. I know fighters are late all the time to the weigh-ins, but uh, maybe we need to do a book and whatnot, weight-cutting techniques on the way to the fight. 
Yeah, I, you know, I've been doing that for a long time. Cut to drive. I have a jump rope if, if I if I if my sled lands ain't open up, I just uh, you know pull off on the shoulder, jump rope for about three four minutes, jump back in the car and crank that heater up. Okay, so that kind of like primes it up and gets it going. That's interesting. Yeah. It's my system working. And oh, then, P, and you'd be a good guy to answer this question. This is what I'm curious about, like, because uh, I mean, you've got a wrestling background. Obviously, the kid wrestles, et cetera, and so forth. When these guys yeah. for camo or cutting weight, how much weight can you cut in a day to fight the same day versus the second day? Man, I would. I wouldn't. Let me see. I fought the same. We had the same day weigh-ins at Long Beach Fight Night when I got robbed on that decision. With Diego Batista, uh, I, I can't. I went from was that one seventy one, and I went to sixty five, and I felt good. I, I honestly wouldn't cut much over seven for same day weigh in. I know okay. people cut more, but uh, older fighters same day weigh ins, I wouldn't go much over seven. Youngsters may be able to pull off like nine or ten. Okay, I I bet they'll still feel it. Uh, day before weigh-ins, shit, you know, guys, are crazy. what did Jamie right. Carr cut for his? Something ridiculous, wasn't it, like 20 pounds? Probably. Well, actually, it's 75, too, because they give you a five-pound weight and allowance, and I think Jamie walks around about, like, 193, something like that. Jamie's always in shape, though, bro. Yeah, he, I was reading his Facebook, he said he cut some, some weight, I mean, some, he was, he was pissed. You know how he is. He takes yeah. it out on the guy for... for uh, he's absolutely. In that he's like, I'm going to make this guy pay for making me cut this weight. Yeah, and then a lot of these guys, what I've learned is uh, they cut these huge amount of weights, and then they get uh, they get the IV and whatnot, and that seems like, you know, the trick. I don't think the fallen angel gets the IV, and that fucker starts cutting, like, 18 pounds, you know, 24 hours out, and I'm thinking to myself, are you fucking kidding me right now? Like... But he pulls it off. Yeah. He pulls it off, and it's I wonder, like I wonder how long he'll be able to do that. And and the other I thing mean, is, how much does that really affect you in the cage? Like, what is the downside of cutting that much weight when you fight? Uh, one of my little wrestlers is, hey, go out in the garage and do shots. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Uh, explain. Uh, okay. Now re- repeat the question. I'm sorry. I've totally forgot what the fuck I asked you to be quiet. <laughs> We're talking about an IV. IV, how much does it affect you in the cage, right? <clears throat> well, the IV, like uh, I was talking about, uh, what's his face? Um, the Fallen Dominic, Angel. How much does it affect him when he cuts 18 pounds? Yeah, when you cut 18 pounds 24 hours out, what are the repercussions of cutting that much weight when you fight? What What is it that happens in the cage the, the following night? I, I, like, I found like... Uh, when I, when I cut pretty hard when I fought Toby Amata and, and, uh, I just felt like I was gassing quicker and my, my muscles were, were not holding up like they usually do. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I, I, sometimes, you know, when you're in a sauna for a long time, it's hard to, hard to get your temperature back down. Mm. I think like sometimes like going in a swimming pool and, and trying to get your temperature back down helps, you know, just like sitting in the, in the pool. But, uh, yeah, it's weird, like, at night when I cut a lot, when at night I'm just, like, tossing and turning because I'm, I'm just trying to pound water, pound water, get my temperature back down. Right. In the sauna or have plastic on and exercising. So it feels, it maybe in my head, I'm not sure, but it feels like it's over. You know, what's a normal body temperature is, what, 98 or something? Yeah, 98.2. So, like, you're running about 100 maybe, you know? Maybe a hundred, yeah. Okay. Not like a fever, but just like right. hot. You know I, mean? I got you. Yeah. Like a Santa, Santa Ana wind. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. I mean, I I have haven't watched Dominic too many of his fights. I seen the Gabe Rudiger one. I seen the one with Reedy. He didn't look like he he gasped with Reedy when he fought Reedy too much. Maybe a little bit. I wasn't there. Where you were there, right? Yes, for that, absolutely. Did it, did it look like he was? Uh, Tuckering out at the end. How you gonna say that, Postal Fee, about me? Oh my god, dude, the Fallen Angel is my favorite. But, um, <laughs> dude, um, 
Or did he look like he was finishing strong all the way to the end? Or is that a bad question? No, like, I'll be honest, like, he did. I think he's okay. a different fighter now. Like, I think he's learned how to cut weight better. Because, like, all those that know the Fallen Angel, like, it's a do-it-yourself kind of kit. Like, he learns his moves off of DVDs and stuff. Like, he didn't have a real yeah. team for the longest time. So, it's like, it's a lot like the way I do shit. Like, fuck it. I don't need a pro shit. Just, like, give me a camera and a microphone. I'll just fucking do it. Wing it. Fuck him. Like Evan Jenner. Yeah, absolutely, dude. Except for I'm smart enough not to go out in the fucking desert and do some crazy shit like that. Yeah, he didn't. That was that was a bad game plan. All right, so let's get let's get back to this uh, this crazy ass shit. Now, what you just what I totally didn't realize is there was a rap, a whole bunch of rap groups, I guess, and whatnot. Who the hell was rapping and like? Where was this thing at, and how many people did it hold? And what do you think the crowd was? It was at the LA Convention Center. Okay. And I was told by the promoter there was sixteen thousand people. At wow, sixteen thousand. Yeah, that's so gnarly. Was, uh, too short. Uh, too short. You know the ones that 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 uh, were most popular. That I heard of was too short. E40, Corrupt and Daz in Dogtown. I think Shug Knight was in the cage. Nice. Uh, Ebo from Friday was there. Okay. Um, that guy Danny. Uh, Danny, he's like plays in those prison movies and stuff. Oh, yeah. Tree Hale yeah. or whatever. Yeah, he was in there. Yeah. Yeah, That's I know it. what you're talking about. Uh huh. Um, a local uh, a psycho realm. Uh, I was hanging out with Killer Priest from Wu Tang all night at the hotel. I didn't even what? Know. He was just hanging out with me like uh, after the fight. we were nah, out. dude. Now and, I'm uh, fucking pissed that I didn't get, dude. I, if I, I would have gone, dude, guy, you know? I might even have had to put on a set and whatnot, dude. I'm kind of bummed that I didn't go. I I don't even know why I didn't know you were fighting. Like, how many fucking days before this event did you get on this card? Like, where the hell was I? Uh. It, well, I kept posting it on Facebook. You didn't see any of the posts, bro. I fucking you know how how much I'm into me. I don't yeah, really care about other people, bro. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. For some reason, I wasn't paying attention because here's the fucked up thing: is like I did interviews with guys that were fighting on the show, but why the fuck then I didn't do an interview with you is what I was thinking like after the event. I'm like, how the fuck did I miss the Postal P? Because I swear to God, I would have gone because Chris could have covered up and comers for me and I could have just mobbed down and back. You would have been a king there, Mark. Bro, I would have loved it. You would have needed a box of Sharpies. Odd, bro. I'm not that guy. You know, you and I, we're not toenail painters or Sharpie kind of guys. We're just, we are what we are, man. It just is what it is. So check it out. Um, I was at the weigh-ins. We did the weigh-ins, you know. Uh, They actually handed me a Sharpie, and they wanted us to sign sign the posters, the shirts, okay. And then they had food for us. They treated us real good. They had food for us. Uh, uh, he, He says, you know, put the wristband on. Chicken, pasta, vegetables, like a good meal. So we ate that, and then um, I went up to the room for a few and, and laid, laid down. And then I went over to Rosemary. I Googled a sushi buffet, went over to this sushi buffet for nine ninety five, all you can eat. Oh, my God. And unfortunately, I was fighting. They had a dollar sake, dollar sake. I'm sitting there watching these people drink sake, and I'm just like, man, I am coming back here after the fight. Win or lose for a sake. Not uh, just a sake, about five of them. So, um, <laughs> I, I went, I went, you know, I went in, I was weighing, you know, my 177, and then I went to that sushi buffet, weighed, weighed my, weighed myself, uh, on the, weighed myself on the scale when I got a sushi buffet, I was 188. And then, wow. went back, uh, Got, you know, got some sleep. I got some okay sleep. A little drama at the hotel with people running around and that, and it's kind of loud, but I got, I got decent sleep. And then, um, you know, we went down to the show 
and uh, my girlfriend came down, met me, and we're driving to the driving up to the show, and I'm looking at this building. I'm like, wow, that's big, that's huge. You know, the LA Convention Center, and um, you know, I'm not no no. Uh, I haven't really fought in like you know huge huge shows. This was pretty big for me as far as attendance and all this and that. You know, I'm yeah, absolutely. Big, so. But I mean, sixteen thousand people. Not, I don't think. I've never been to a I mean, show with that many people, bro. Yeah, yeah, mostly strike force and the USD guys that have fought right. those kinds of crowds. But so I'm pulling around, and I mean, <laughs> you know, you know, it, it was, uh, it was, let's say, a uh, the kind of crowd that, that likes to go see rap shows is a lot of what I was right. seeing out front. Right. And I'm like, whoa, you know, I'm, you know, just. Mind your own business, keep your head straight and walk, you know, and, uh, you know, <laughs> just try to, try to make it to the fight with no, uh, no problems, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, that place was no joke to say the least, you know, uh, there was some, in, there was an incident in the parking lot where, uh, someone got, uh, got, uh, stabbed out front and all that. So anyway, uh. Yeah, we call that Raider Games. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's <laughs> been it, there, bro. It happens, you know, yeah. it happens. It, yeah, it, it wasn't. You don't, you wouldn't no, blame it, that on the MMA. You would blame that on the rap. I totally get that because that shit never happens at MMA, MMA. shows. You would yeah. fight the dude, you would rear naked choke the guy. Like, no one would pull a blade at a fucking MMA show. <laughs> that's that's and none of these guys wanted to fight hand to hand. They're walking around the street, right? You tell they're packs of uh, as most of know, them are that way. Yeah, and pack. So we're pulling up, and this line is just incredible. I'm like looking at the line. I look at my girlfriend. I'm like, "Wow, this is awesome!" You know, I'm like, "This is awesome." Right. We got VIP parking pass. Uh, come in. You know, I go inside, and you know, VIP. Oh, this is the fire. This is the fire. I let us through the VIP, and uh, you know, they even had a little red carpet going up to the place for the VIP. Wow. So, I mean, I'm telling you, this was it. Yeah, kind of felt special for a day. So um, I go in and people are actually, people recognize me, they're actually asking me, of all people, to take pictures and stuff with them. I'm like, oh, cool. You know what I mean? I was flattered. So um, took some pictures, this and that, walked around. There was a lot of booths, a lot of tattoo booths. Uh, there was, uh, uh, you know, some go-go dancers, uh, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of, you know, girls at the, Boost in the booty shorts, just like you know, MMA show, you know, uh, showing off the, the gear and all that. And uh, I uh, ran into my buddy from Bombs first and um, grabbed a pair of shorts from him because I didn't really get any sponsors together. And I we figured out a, the short, the short thing. And and uh, my buddy from Dylan made me fight shirts uh, with my name on them. Dylan Fightwear. So. Uh, we had his shirts and then his shirts and went in uh, to the uh, arena and Daz and Corrupt were playing <laughs> and uh, there was a lot of marijuana smoke in there. Really? That's odd. Uh, a lot of marijuana smoke. <clears throat> yeah, uh, to say the least. I mean, they uh, <clears throat> you could see the smoke around the cage, you know? You could see the smoke... <laughs> Going up, it, it looked like the forest fire. <laughs> <laughs> that is it was awesome. awesome. That is awesome. So I go up, to, I go up to the commission and I say, you know what? You guys can't test this tonight. You know that, right? I go, it, it's just completely unfair. I go, any fighter who sat and watched watched the rap, I said, it's going to test dirty. It's inevitable. <laughs> I, I walked in and I was having to go out because I was like, I was like, not because I was worried about the test, but I was like worried about, okay, am I going to get. Right. Totally am I going to be so fucking high when I get into the cage? Like, whoa, bro. Let's yeah, not even fly it. Let's just go get nachos. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, the, the rap was, the rap was, you know, I, I, I was like corrupt and I like the dog pound and corrupt. You know, remember the. Sure. Remember that album they put out, Streets' uh, uh, Mother. Mother. Sure. Yeah, they were playing the songs. I'm like, yeah, this is cool. I got to catch them, and then I had to go check in. And, you know, Killer Priest and all them were yeah. in the back of the dressing room. I'm like, good luck to you guys, and, and too short and all them. You That's know, badass. 
Yeah. I, I didn't get to see Too Short and E-40 and all them, because once we check in, you know how that works. Right. you got to stay back there. But uh, people uh, people said they really enjoyed the music. It was a uh, uh, really good concert. You know, uh, I think, I guess, the big hit of the night was E-40. That was that was the favorite. Okay. But uh, Too Short's the OG, right? Out of all those guys. Oh, the, absolutely. Like, the icon, the guy. Bro, back the, in the uh, day, this dude used to put out a tape like every three weeks, dude. Like I'd show up yeah. at the local spot here in the, in town. There'd be a new fucking too short, and it would have a remix of one of the old songs, like Freaky Tales, the remix, and the re remix. Like it would always be some shit like that. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Short sure would get down. Yeah, the um, you know, you know, Destry, uh. He, he went out and watched him. I'm like, what, what's too short rapping about out there? Oh, uh, you know, the usual, getting his dick sucked. So. <laughs> no, uh that's new. Yeah. That's some new material. Yeah. <laughs> so. Who would have thunk it? <laughs> so, uh. Next thing you're going to yeah, say, Snoop Dogg raps about weed, dude. No way. That's crazy. Yeah. Can't believe that. I can't no believe doubt. That. It's unheard of. But, yeah, everyone enjoyed it. You know, my um, girlfriend's sisters were there and they. She's in the old rap, you know. Nice. So she got to kick it out there. Like you got to go fight and shit. And she's like, "Fuck, this is awesome." Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so I what mean, time does this event awesome. start? What time? Like, what time does the the rap show and all that shit start? Eleven a.m. Oh, okay. Eleven a.m. to eleven p.m. That's fucking badass. Okay. Yeah. How much were awesome. tickets? Uh, you for like. That this is the this is the like best part. I don't even know if you're gonna believe it, but the ticket included the music, all the booze, tattoos, and the MMA fight. They started at thirty dollars. Oh no way! MMA fights, tattoos, uh, and twelve hours of entertainment, a, dude. That's badass. Getting a fight gear to choose from. Yeah, yeah, for that's $30. badass. And okay. but, you know the seats, some of those thirty dollars seats are pretty far far up there. Right. But they even comped me a uh, four hundred dollar tickets. Wow. So um, I gave those to um, my girlfriend and her sisters because I, I wanted them closer to the cage with more security around. Which but, makes uh, sense in an event like with uh, with the tagline "Cons" on it anywhere. Yeah. 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 We well, call man, it. it was a hell of a deal, a smoking deal. Yeah, that sounds but, uh, like an awesome deal. So that that was the guy that does the, uh, felony fighter guys. Well, what was that? That was the felony fighter guys that put that shit on. I guess they do felony yeah, fights. Yeah, felony fight. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever watched God. that shit, P? Uh, no, I never have. Already. Dude, you got to get on fucking YouTube. It's the most insane shit I've ever seen in my entire life. There's a fucking white guy that bites off this dude's fucking nose. Oh, he does. Dude, it's the craziest shit I've ever... I'm not even a little bit kidding, dude. This shit is absolutely... When they say felony fights, they're not even fucking a little bit kidding. They got dudes... It's a real deal. Dude, like, uh, I'm telling you, go on YouTube and fucking Google felony fights. For all six viewers that are watching live right now, go to felony... Go to YouTube, put in felony fights. And they, it, it's got production value and whatnot, but like those spillways that are in LA, they got just like, you know, not to be derogatory fuckers. They got two Mexican dudes that are like all fucking tatted up that look like they'd been in the pen for a minute or whatnot. And, you know, a little shorty versus whatever, fought the loco, whatever the fuck, right? And, dude, they're fucking kicking each other in the fucking head and smashing each other up. There's like no rules, like it's totally on. The other fights yeah. are like down by the river and whatnot. Dude, I saw one that was like no every man for themselves, four guys, dude, just kicking the fuck out of one another. Jeez. It's really awesome. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know, but I mean I really enjoy probably- that shit. Way too violent. Like I swear to God, check this out. I put one of their videos up on cageradio.com and Google uh-huh. Google AdSense banned me. So I can't even make any money with Google AdSense because I put one of their fucking videos up on my uh, up on my page. AdSense? Yeah, Google AdSense. Like, it makes money for your website. Like, yeah. they put up these ads. Yeah, Google banned yeah. me. They sent me a fucking letter. Hey, dickweed, you, uh, you put up some uh, legal material that we didn't approve of. 
and uh, now yeah. you can't make any more money with your with our, your AdSense. So, huh. yeah, they hate me. So Crazy. F- fuck them. Anyway, take me through the fight. Um, it's gone down. You got weed smoke. You're trying not to yeah, get Yeah, it high. pretty much cleared out. Well, actually, it didn't clear out. People were still firing it up during the fight. But, uh, Beautiful. Yeah, I had, you know, I had um, Gabe Rudiger uh, in my corner, Destry. Uh, he's been to every one of my fights. You know, they're, I, had, I had a rough year, you know, so um, as you know, and probably a lot of people know that have uh, been looked on my record or followed all of their rally fighters that have fought me, you know, but uh, so, you know, my, my I'm just like having, having to, you know, go in. The game plan is just like, you know, don't bullshit around. Just go in, attack, 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 attack. Just re- you know, throw punches, setting up shots. So, uh, you know, I'm in the corner and Gabe and Destry and uh, everyone's, you know, not everyone, Gabe and Destry are telling me, you know, attack, attack, attack. Like, you know, just be confident with your hands and, and take a shot. And I, that's what I did. I, I came out, rushed him. Uh, he actually threw a kick out of surprise that he would even kick me because you take people down off kicks and that's how he lost last time. He kicked me and I took him down. Um, he tried a few arm bars, a few triangles. I just kept good posture. I was trying to punch for so long. He's like six four, and uh, came down with a uh, few punches, loosened up his guard, and then stood over him and started hipping in. You know that hip in pass thing, right? Where you're over the top posturing down and then uh uh past his legs he was trying to up kick nothing was really coming his legs were too long his it was like his calf was up to my ear and it's because every time he'd bring his foot down to kick me i just dropped my head a little because his legs were so long then i kind of like passed to the side but he was kind of like uh kind of jammed in the corner i threw a couple like bowling ball style punches you know okay into and then he rolled and gave me his back, and I put hooks in and stretched them. And I was picking, picking, picking my shots, hard shots. You know, boom, like boom, like boom, boom. Waiting for his hands to move, and then Dusty and Gabe started yelling, you know, flurry, flurry. Like they're not going to stop it, just off those big punches. Right. I was thinking like I was going to like, you know, hey, I'm just going to try to get a hard one in and KO him, you know, under the armpit and all that, and. uh he said, just flurry and we'll stop it. And I'm like, oh, shit, okay. Blah, 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 blah. And then Cecil stopped it. And that was it. All right. Well, there you have that. So, victory. You're back on the winning streak again. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, what's up I next? I wouldn't say streak, but I got to win. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Get the That's streak a, going. Yeah, it's a, it's a streak. Yeah. 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 So, I get home uh, last, well, I got home Sunday. Sunday, I get a text Sunday night. Do you want to fight at 155? Damn. Uh, I say when, and they say June 4th. That's two weeks. Well, less than two weeks now. Oh. And uh, I'm like, sure. <laughs> I'll oh, do that. Christ. And Here we go. So I'm dieting my ass off right now. Uh, you know, I had one meal a day, but, you know, I went for a bike ride last night to get this weight out. You know uh, Eddie Millis from the Shark Tank? Yes. Yeah, he. It's his show. What is, it? is it? What's that show called? Uh, that one in Ontario. Do you remember? I don't want to say the wrong name. I don't know. Uh, That's why I'm not going to fucking open my pie hole. Yeah, but it's well, that I one. Say and adrenaline. I think you're well, right. I say adrenaline. <clears throat> I think you're right. Yeah, and Ontario Convention Center, another another good size show. Uh, against uh, Andy Morales, possibly in the works. But uh, he's got to accept the fight at 160 because there's no way in hell I'll make 55. Even with but, your uh, raps? Yeah, I'm trying to, you know, I'm going to call him after this. And I, I got down, I was, well, like I said, I was 190 over the weekend. and I'm, I'm down to 77 now. How so, much longer uh, are you going to fight, bro? Uh... Uh, I'm gonna beat Randy's record. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go one year longer, on Randy Couture, dude. <laughs> fucking what a pussy he is, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go one longer than that fucking pussy. Uh, yeah. That's I mean, when did Dan Severn? How old is he? 
fifty. Dude, I think I want to say he's fifty eight. Fifty eight. Dude, he got 90. fucking smashed last weekend. I don't know if you got to see that video. I put that up on Cage Radio. Dude, that that referee needs to be fucking killed. This guy. Oh my god, Dan the Beast is knocked the fuck out. I mean, out, out. And uh, this guy's just teeing off on him, and then he just like puts his hands down, like, "Dude, are you looking at this? Are you gonna stop this fight?" And then the official comes running over from way over on the other side of the cage. Like, the, the fucking guy hits Dan the Beast. Dan the Beast just folds to the canvas, and then the referee runs to the very back of the cage, like the farthest away that you could be from the action, and then, uh, like, squats down to look to see what kind of punishment Dan the Beast is taking. And he's out. <laughs> and dude, he's been out for, like, you know, five seconds already. Oh, my God. You know what? I've seen a lot of that lately. That uh, guy, uh, Cecil Peoples that guy is, let that is notorious for that. Fought, really got about, you know, six, six extra ones in on me when I was already out. Oh yeah, I got some. Uh, I got some news. I want to tell you who I heard it from, but I heard that uh, that he sold the cage, dude. Five grand. Who did? He did. Al. Pro <laughs> combat. It's done. He has no more cage. <laughs> and then, from what I hear from, um, what about Shelly? Shelly and Al were both cage side Friday night in Bakersfield. <laughs> dude, he's giving me dirty licks all night. It was so fucking classic, dude. I was laughing. Wearing yeah, the yeah. same... Rings around his armpits. Yeah, dude, I didn't get that fucking close to him. But I was looking across the cage at him at one point, and like, they were at an angle. It, looked, it almost looked like he was sitting on her lap. Like, like they only gave him one ticket, and they hadn't... Like, Baby, come here, Shelly, come here. Let Daddy sit on your lap. Dude, it was so fucking great. <laughs> so fucking great. It's like, uh, you, you know it's Alan Shelley because she's got a sweat ring on her shoulder and he's got one under his armpit. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny, dude. I'll have to look that up the next time. But it's like, dude, it looks like they're just trapped in a time fucking warp, dude. I don't even know. It's like they never change. It's the same outfit, the same everything. But uh, The giant slayer. <laughs> yes, the giant slayer. Uh, I, dude, Kenny Enta, the dragon, got knocked out by Brock Jardine. <laughs> I was sitting cage side with James, and I'm like, it's Brock Jardine. He's the giant slayer, or he's the dragon slayer. And, <laughs> dude, we were just. How was that show? It was, it was fantastic. Wrestling? It was a fantastic show. Brian Cobb, I don't know what the fuck he does, like all 364 other days of the year. But the days that he comes out to that show, he fucks people up. And I'm telling you right now, Pulse to P, that guy looked fucking amazing. I don't know what the fuck Brian Cobb is doing. Like, is he just, like, not wanting to fight? Because this guy that he fought, this Radley Martinez, a.k.a. Rad Martinez, is kind of a big deal from Utah. And uh, ESPN is going to have a big deal about him on in a couple of weeks and whatnot. But, um, dude, I'm telling you, Brian Cobb. Looked phenomenal. Uh, even James thought so. That was a fantastic fight. I believe it went to. How did his striking look? Uh, his striking looked amazing, and uh, he really, truly lumped up uh, Radley Martinez, cut his face up quite a bit, and then uh, ended up securing the uh, the rear naked choke and uh, uh-huh. tapped him. Did he wrestle much, or was it mostly a stand-up fight? It was, uh, it was, it was a stand-up fight. Um, they, uh, they, they did a little bit of wrestling. Rad tried to take him to the ground and whatnot. And, uh, Cobb, you know, would get back to the feet and then Cobb would just tune him up with the hands and whatnot. And then, you know, Rad would go for the one leg or the double leg trying to take Cobb down. And, uh, he took Cobb down a couple of times. Um, you can see the highlight video. It's up on cageradio.com. I have all the fights, highlights and whatnot up there. If you want to check that out. Cobb got back to his feet. Yeah, yeah, but but Cobb Cobb got got back to his feet. Yeah, Cobb got back to his feet, and then uh, towards the end of the fight, he just uh, he just gets his back and uh, secures the rear naked check, and that's a wrap. But uh, so you're saying uh, Brian Cobb striking has much improved? 
I would say so. Yeah, I I thought he was uh, he looked excellent on his feet. Now I don't know if Radley Martinez is not a good striker and not a good boxer, uh-huh. but yeah, I mean he made, he made Cobb look pretty uh, pretty damn phenomenal. good. Yeah, phenomenal. So Brock Jardine, Cobb beat. Brock Jardine hit uh, Kenny Enta just behind the ear with a shot 22 seconds into the first round and uh, just put the dragon on his ass and out. Really? Yeah, it was a wrap. And what about Vargas? No, Vargas did not fight that night. Oh, he was supposed to fight Cobb originally, right? Um, Yeah, I think that's who that was all about. Or was Vargas... I don't remember who was supposed to fight Cobb originally. Maybe it was just Radley Martinez. But um, uh, what were the other fights? There was uh, three guys from uh, Team Stockton that took to action. Uh, Bobby Escalani looked good in his uh, fight against uh, Chris Tangonen. Uh, uh-huh. He choked out Chris Tangonen. And then um, do you remember that? I think it was the same show that you were at, that Anderson Silva's guy. Was that the same sh- show? Was Anderson at the show that you fought? No. That was, was the, the last, that was the other one. Huh? Yeah. Anderson Silva, yeah, has Damasio something. I, can't, I think that's his name. I can't remember. Anyway, he wears the little fucking yellow and black shorts and whatnot. He came out, but uh, that was a three-round war. Uh, uh-huh. From the, the Team Stockton guys went two and one. That was a good uh, battle. And then Mike Christensen stepped up a weight class. He's just taking any fight he can right now, I guess. And uh, he was just uh, straight out classed in his effort to get back on a winning streak and uh the show in itself is just i mean the production value is fantastic bowler and uh, adams do a phenomenal job and other than uh pure crap was in the building it was a fantastic night <laughs> pure crap. that's good that's good hopefully scott uh scott gets back to where he wants to be with the pavoni yeah absolutely maybe we can get you out on the uh San Luis Obispo show. I don't know what the deal is, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. He, he uh, I don't know. A lot of other guys from my gym on the card, and I never got no call. But I got a lot of fights in the works, and I mean, it'd be nice to fight in my hometown. But if he doesn't put me on the card, then uh, there's a lot of other options out there for me right now. So absolutely, we'll get on. I got a big following and. In the five cities, you know, I've lived here my whole life, so. Well, yeah, we'll get down to a Walmart with a pile of fucking <laughs> yeah. Sharpies, dude. We'll, we'll fucking handle business. <laughs> <laughs> if he wants a couple hundred tickets sold, then put me on the card. If not, I'll go fight in L.A. Yeah. So. Well, I'll go watch you fight in L.A. for sure, so. All right, well. Yeah, uh, I know. I wish you would have came, man. I know. You would have had a good time. I, I, to, I totally would have. Stuff with cage radio and all that. I would have uh, thrown it up, dude. I might have gone in the fucking cage, started dropping fucking buzz and rhymes at the same fucking time, just fucking people up because that's how I do. But, uh, <laughs> all right. You well, know, there was a good fight with uh, Cal. Are we coming to an end here? Yeah, we can do whatever the fuck we want, bro. I heard that there was, uh, there was a good fight with Cal and Anthony McDavid. I would give the fight of the night to. Okay, take us through that. Uh, came out. Are you familiar with Joe Calavitas? Yes. A phenomenal national champion wrestler. Uh, uh, McDavid just, you know, he doesn't, his record doesn't really, uh, you know, on paper, it doesn't say what kind of, he's seven and seven now. Uh, he beat, uh, he beat Calavitas, but Calavitas, was just putting on a takedown clinic. You know, his transitions from his strikes to his takedowns was phenomenal. I mean, this guy was hitting, he was hitting uh, two-on-ones to low singles and just, like, crazy stuff where I'm looking at Destry just going, did you see that? Like, holy shit, you know? Like, like wow. I mean, his wrestling, I was blown away. And uh, he ended up, he was, he was winning the fight. He was getting, uh, he got points taken away by Cecil for... I think he was headbutting either the head or the chest area. Got a couple points taken away, and then in the second round, uh, I mean, the action was just you know back and forth. And McDavid was he was doing pretty good at defending, being not being a wrestler, but uh, he he ended up pulling his head down and 
and landed on his knee and rocked him, and he kind of fell down, and he finished him with punches. But uh, the, the, there was another good fight with Jason Meters and Joe Nichols. Are you familiar with them? Negative Ranger. Uh, Joe Nichols was uh, the 805 champ at that show that was up at the Chumash. Okay. Champ. Jason Meters was on an eight-fight winning streak. Uh, you know, he knocked out Roman Machichin. Uh, he uh, had a win over Joe Camacho. <laughs> you know, does a lot of his fighting in L.A. He's been around for a long time. He beat Cruz Gomez way back in the day. Mm. I've been fighting since 99. Uh, black dude, pretty ripped up with the abs and all that. But uh, they're both friends of mine. But they were coming out, and Joe's, Joe wrestled in the Marines. He was a Marine. And uh, come out, and uh, Joe was, you know, I don't think Joe wanted to stand with him a whole lot. He was taking him down, taking him down a lot. You know, Jason's got heavy hands. He's got a few knockouts, and... Uh, Kept taking him down. Jason was doing pretty good protecting himself on the ground with his butterfly guard and, you know, keep, keeping wrist control, things right. like that on, on the bottom. Mm-hmm. But uh, they came into the second round, I want to say, and uh, uh, Joe had, like went for like a high crash and caught the back of the knee and threw a right hook. And he was out, and he came down, and we're talking about another late stop with a bunch of unnecessary punches. It was wow, pretty brutal knockout. Cecil that, Peoples that again, or no? What's that? Cecil Peoples again, or what? No, this other guy. I've never seen him. He was a bald uh, white guy, a bald guy, kind of okay. Husky. Now, okay. I don't know his name, but he's newer. Okay. And then Rick Slayton, the main yeah. Man, Rick Slayton that's got what I was going to ask. That's what I was going to ask, because I heard, I read somewhere, I think it was the Belcher report said uh, the fans didn't like the way the action was going, so they started throwing shit in the cage. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the whole place was there for Rick, apparently. I actually left, but I seen I seen the last part of it on a, a someone recorded on their phone, and it was like just a one-two, like a pop-pop, and then people were going crazy when he got knocked out. Wow. Uh, Ishmael Gonzalez knocked him out. And then uh, one of Antonio McKee's fighters, uh, I can't remember his name, but he, he came in the cage with this big python, big, huge python. Well, it was all albino white. Wow. And after his win, he had the snake. And he, De- Debo, you know, Debo from Friday, yeah. he don't like snakes. He don't like snakes. He's trying to put the snake around him, and Debo's running around the cage. It's kind of funny. Wow. Pretty cool. They brought a kid in to have leukemia. Uh, gave him a bike and monster, monster drink. Gave him a bunch of toys, and the whole crowd, the whole crowd, gave him a standing uh, ovation. Oh, that's cool. Probably made the kids <laughs> night. And so, what about UFC? Do we got any uh, any uh, predictions or? Cole Escovedo is going to win, and Michael McDonald's going to win because they're both local fighters, and they're both on the card. Yeah. So that's pretty much all Michael I got McDonald's on that. Big. I like uh, I like big country. Um, I don't even know who else. Uh, I haven't even reviewed the card to be quite honest with you. I just all I care uh, about is whether or not Cole Escobedo wins. That's it. Tiago's gonna fight, right? Who? Tiago. Yeah, I think so. I think that's on this card. I get them all mixed up, bro. Yeah, I, I, I know. I know. I, that's why I got, I got Cole McDonald and Big Country myself. Yeah. So there you have that. All right. Well, that fight, uh, that fight, the cage versus cons, sounds like it was a pretty epic event. Um, congratulations on your win, my man. Anybody you want to Thanks, shout bro. out before uh, before we shut this bitch down? Uh, you, of course, uh, Cage Radio. Thank you, sir. Don't forget to visit the website. Uh, Dusty Bettis, uh, always there every time. Uh, Gay Burger, then. Corner me last couple of fights. Uh, I like uh, like the way he corners uh, the pit. Trying to hackle in all my sparring partners there. Um, of course, my girlfriend and and uh, the Garcias. You know her, her side of the family. They're like my second family. So probably soon to be family or whatever. You know they are family. Uh, and that that's you know Boss Purse villain fight wear. And uh, I forgot anyone. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, there you have that. Well, that sounds awesome, bro. Oh, Cage, Cage versus Collins, Harvey Estrada and the promoter, Scott. 
and everybody that put that show together is phenomenal. We were treated like kings. Is, is there any uh, word on when the next one will be? Or if there will be a next one? Uh, it's kind of up in the air. Okay. When, you know, they were they were exhausted at the end of the night. They they came back from the hotel and they were they looked like they got ran over by trucks. Nice. So uh, uh, they were trying to just figure out their numbers and and how they made out and everything else. And uh, they're probably going to go from there. I'm sure I'll be I'll be giving you guys an update right I hear about the next case versus con too but i hope i mean their facebook's blowing up everybody wants it wants it too you know what i mean yeah like yeah it was it was a good time and we were saying hey you know throw some metal bands in there See Ye- I- yeah all right p throw well uh, there. well we appreciate it my man and uh we'll definitely talk to you soon keep me in the loop anytime uh you got a fight etc and so forth uh let me know what's up yeah, for sure. I'll let you know uh, about this show on the 4th, Adrenaline, all that. Hopefully, we'll be all on this show talking about another win. Okay. Week. That sounds like, a, Hi, sounds like a plan. All right. Appreciate it. Postal cool. P, take care. Preston Sharp. Thanks again, my man. Hi, bro. Out. All right. There you have that. Out. That's how we do it here. All right. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up. I want to thank uh, everybody for uh, your continued support. This week's uh, web numbers absolutely out of control record numbers. I want to thank Kenny Inta for getting knocked out and uh, the guy at um, Up and Comers. I can't remember what the hell, Matt something. Um, you guys getting knocked out just drove the, number, <laughs> the numbers through the roof. I put both of those videos up on the fucking UG and uh, I think they've had like about two or 3,000 hits each. So. All right, I appreciate it. Uh, for everybody at the show tonight, that would just be me. Um, next week, I think we take the week off. It's uh, Memorial Day weekend, unless Cole Escovito wins. Maybe I'll have a special edition. It'll just be Escovito and I drinking heavily somewhere. Uh, but he probably can't do that anymore because he's in the UFC now. So, All right, for everybody at the show, like I said, that would be Mott's. Good night now.